In this video, we're going to learn how to identify the IMFs that hold molecules in the solid or liquid phases. Um, and to do that, I've created a flow chart. So let's apply this flow chart. Let's say we have CO2 molecules. Well, um, the first question is, is it a covalent compound? Absolutely. Two nonmetals would give us a covalent compound. So yes. Um, next question is, is this polar? And for that, we're going to have to look at the Lewis structure, which I'm going to skip the <clears throat> showing your work part of this um, to get to the Lewis structure. This is carbon dioxide. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So there's a dipole moment pointing towards the oxygen, but there's also another dipole moment pointing towards this oxygen. <clears throat> and because the dipole moments are equal and opposite, there is no net dipole moment, uh, which means this is a non-polar uh, compound. So we can say no, and we can conclude that there will only be London dispersion forces holding together multiple carbon dioxide molecules. So if you ever see CO2 in, say, the solid phase, it's being held together uh, by London dispersion forces only. Next question is, what IMS exists among CH2O molecules? And yes, CH2O uh, is also covalent um, because uh, CH and O are all um, nonmetals. Now, CH2O would look like this. It's formaldehyde is another name for it. And if we try to figure out the dipole moments, well, again, a carbon to oxygen bond uh, is going to be polar towards the oxygen. Carbon is a little bit more electronegative than hydrogen, though not by a whole lot, but there will be slight dipole moments. And then when I take this, this, and this, and I sort of figure out their resultant, the net dipole is going to be um, going towards the oxygen. So this means that this part of the molecule is going to be partial negative. This is going to be partial positive. There is a dipole moment here overall, and it is a slightly polar molecule. So we will say, yes, this is polar. The third question we ask is, does this contain HF, HO, and or HN bonds? And the answer is no. Yes, there is hydrogen, but that does not mean that there will be hydrogen bonding because this hydrogen is not bonded to something electronegative enough to really allow for hydrogen bonding to occur. This would need to be a very, very polar bond for that hydrogen to be partially positive for an adjacent molecule to attract to it. So I'm going to say no here. Um, and that means that there are only dipole-dipole uh, interactions and London dispersion forces, because London dispersion forces exist among all covalent compounds. Um, LDF apply here, in addition to the dipole-dipole interactions that we get on account of this being a polar molecule. Finally, we have what IMS exists among NH3 molecules. NH, yes, this is a covalent compound because both are nonmetals. Is it polar? Well, we've got an N with a lone pair and three Hs. Each of these N to H bonds is definitely polar going towards the nitrogen, which is one of the most electronegative elements. And so, yes, this is polar. And does it contain an HF, HO, and or HN bond? Well, it's got three NH bonds, so absolutely yes. We will say that there are hydrogen bonds formed among NH3 molecules in addition to London dispersion forces. So that is all. Hope this video has helped. Feel free to leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.